Arriving at One Tree Island Research Station, a coral cay in the southern Great Barrier Reef, it's immediately obvious that this pristine island has seen minimal impacts by humans, as it has one of the highest levels of protection within the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. One Tree Island is a research zone, which means it's protected from both fishing and tourism. Therefore, it's home to an abundance of marine flora and fauna. Research at the site has been going for many decades and focuses on a range of topics including climate change, bleaching, sedimentation, and their impacts on the ecology of the coral reef organisms. We're lucky enough to get to stay for a couple of days as the first non-research group ever permitted on the island. Here we're given a tour of the impressive research station which was established by two young scientists in the 1970s. Come along as we experience the beauty of this special place and meet some of the island's locals. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore the planet both above and below the surface. And see what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. Australia and it's a very unique and special place because it has been a research station for a very long time, for many decades and it's not a very common thing. It's very important to support this kind of uh, scientific research because the information that you are going to gain doing this is it's going to help to preserve and to restore this marine environment. And thanks to the University of Sydney, it has been possible for many decades uh, bringing here so many students and uh, scientists from all around the world to conduct all these research and achievements. solar panels on top of all of their buildings here. That's a lot of kilowatts. I don't know how much, but quite a bit. I'm in 60, 850 amp batteries. 
Ah, oh, so this is our time for Yeah. Look at that, man. Eh? Next level. <laughs> oh, man. So we've seen like the, the big granddaddy of our compressor. This giant thing will pump all of their um, holding tanks and then they'll fill their dive tanks off of the holding tanks. So they have a pretty good system for such a small little outpost, I think. It's amazing. You jealous? Yeah, very. And how many engines? A lot. A lot. So, yeah, I'm a bit jelly. They're all aluminium, strong as, and uh, yeah, just a lot to. I'm sure when they have 28 people here on island, they need like a lot of different vessels to do everybody's projects all at the same time. So, it's really cool. If you don't know, uh, Megan is a chemical engineer and uh, she wanted to specialize in water treatment and bring clean water to the people. So when you see something like this, it's like off the grid water system, what do you think? I think that's pretty amazing because it's a, like a big freshwater system. It's like 75,000 liters. So it's quite impressive. 21 tanks. The cool thing is like they as well collect water. So. It's nice to compare this island as a big boat because we collect water, fresh water, rainwater. So that's quite the same. So these big pipes right here, all the way to the tank from the roof of this building. So um, that's really interesting and really similar with what we do on Sylvia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right, now. so to take shower on the island, you have to be really aware of the conservation of the water, obviously. So it's one bucket per person per day. that you fill here mm -hmm. and then you go to the shower. Beautiful shower. Oh yeah, way, I like it. Okay. So here we go. Really simple and practical uh, system. Yeah. I really like that. It is. What do you do? Nah, so that's your full bucket. You, so you put the bucket from your bucket into that bucket, and then you raise it up. <laughs> you can even choose the... The flow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's Amy's. That's Amy's height, that's right? That's Amy's <laughs> Whenever they have big groups come out, they do their best to get uh, everybody to help out a little bit. Everybody contributes a little bit just to keep the uh, station presentable. And since so there's seven of us at the moment, I thought we would uh, do whatever we could to, to help out and to uh, make the station nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tree Isle of Special Seaweed. There you <laughs> this go. This is a native, this one stays. Is it? So That's a good bush. Yes. That's a good bush. Throw it in there. So we are going to swim around, see what we see, <laughs> and uh, survey everything on a board, and uh, see how many sick rays, how many different species of fish, and all this. So let's do that. Look at me. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. 
Alma is ready. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are ready? What are you making for lunch? Uh, some spring rolls. Yeah. Some veggies. For a hot day? It's oh, a delicious. summer roll. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. delicious. Summer Fresh. rolls are the best summer, as the name says, mm -hmm. summer food because everybody can make their own. Yeah. You can put all the ingredients that you want. If you don't like anything, you don't have to eat it. And it's it's actually really good for big groups that if you don't know everybody and you have to cook the meal, then you cannot miss it, like, true. there's no mistake, yeah. That's true. And yeah, even away from the boss, always cooking something nice. Yeah. That's yeah. really nice. Hey, hey, hey. After lunch, we're here. Some of them enjoying the, the bathing. Some of them just laying down, having a little sister. And what can I say about this place? We, um, this, there are no words. I think through the images you will be able to see how special, magical, and such an honor to be here, actually. I cannot feel more grateful. It's, I, it's over the top. I, we've been talking, like the other day, I think, um, I've been talking about luxury, what luxury means for you. And for me, it's this. Within the little path uh, of the island, going for a snorkel, going for a kayak, uh, reading the books, reading a little the research, uh, watching a video about it. All of this, uh, learning is a luxury too. So every time we arrive to this kind of places, I think we do a step forward of at least what I want in my life and what I want to dedicate my life to. It's just not traveling. Um, I want to travel with meaning. I want to travel with an impact. I want to do what's best for the planet and yeah, these kind of places just lead us one step forward to what we really want and yeah, I'm, I'm stoked, I've, I feel really happy, really, really happy. What's our next activity in the island? Go for a reef walk and see the whole island. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, we're all wearing How sexy our booties. You look uh, uh, no. farmer Ra sexy. <laughs> Rashid, we have a farmer shirt. We have a uh, no, 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 no. oh yeah, we have a safari shirt over here. <laughs> and I have the I don't know if you see it. The, the Hawaiian, the resort shirt. <laughs> so yeah, we are like all set up. Party. Yeah. And we have Megan. Megan, which kind of shirt? She's she's absolutely she's a local now. Rapid. <laughs> No, no, I actually, little, I actually love it. A little difficult to Sorry, walk. Sorry, I cannot walk, sink, and 
Now I love it, it's super nice. We saw like some nice uh, corals and um, little crabs and like, little creatures that you maybe don't see when you're diving because you see more the fish, big thing, and you don't pay attention to these little things living there. So now it's the moment to see them. And yeah, and it's really relaxing. The waves, like you can hear the waves in the background, and it's beautiful. So uh, I like that. What do we have here, Henrik? Some plastic. Yeah. It's going to be anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, we have a bottle. Yeah. All sorts of plastic. Yeah. How many times do you have to clean the beach every week? I go around usually two, three times a week. Oh. Just always walk around the island. Not going. Yeah. Pay well. Normally get a handful every week. Even in the most pristine place, you cannot escape from plastic. Yeah. No, it's everywhere. Yeah. So sad. Yeah, one more here. Oh, what do you got there, Aitor? Another bottle? Yeah. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. It's not much. It's kind of like walking on the moon. We can, you can imagine that. That's what we're, what we can imagine being on the moon. Yes. Like craters and. Uh, but all it's all coral, so we have our protective shoes on. Let's have a look. And it's not like your average uh, sandy island, but yeah. it's kind of unique in the fact that it's coral all composed of coral. Island. Yeah, hundred percent coral, no sand here. So on our reef walk, we just made our way from what appeared to be like walking on the moon to now walking on snow. It looks very like it'd be soft and fluffy, <laughs> but it's actually hard, sharp, sharp pieces of coral reef. <laughs> yeah, it's almost the same, but it's as beautiful as the snow. Very good. We just saw the most amazing sight. There's an eagle that lives on this island, and that's the top predator on this island. So he's the one who hunts everything below him. Once again, right? Always. Yeah. So, we have a special tree in this island that learned to kill birds to use it as a fertilizer. Do you want to explain uh, what? Yeah. Okay, some seeds on the branches. And those seeds have, like, they are kind of, um, they stay stuck Spiky, on the birds. Yeah on the um, feather of the birds, so which makes the birds the bird not being able to move. So the bird cannot fly, cannot do nothing, so he's going to die slowly, slowly, right here. And that's how this tree killed the bird. It's crazy, you know, a tree killing a bird. Think about that. So like, it kills crazy. the and it happens, it dies, it dies. So close to the roofs, yes. roots. Yeah. close to the roots and it uses that as a fertilizer. Like a mother nature. Yeah. Crazy. It's, it's just like a pre it, it plays like a predator, no? Yeah. yeah. That, uh, Who will think about that? It's just yeah. crazy. It's a tree killing a bird. I never I didn't know that and like I would never think about that. No. Uh, it's crazy. It's pretty special to it's interesting, being able yeah. to witness this. Uh, yeah. I'm amazed. It's, yeah. like, it's happening. Comparing this to the ball, like uh, saving the water and like taking care of the environment you're in, but they didn't say something about it. Is the beds? This is not like like on the boat. It's comfier beds. <laughs> yeah, it's a good bed. Yeah. <laughs> nice, yeah. like bunk beds, but it's like comfy, very com uh, comfortable. Yeah, very it's comfortable. Super nice. Yeah. So it's surrounded by the yeah. birds pitching, <laughs> chirping, chirping, yeah. chirping, maybe chirping. That's, 
sunrise is coming in just a couple minutes and I am on the east side of the island at a place that's called the Gutter Run. And whew, it's gonna be a full day of adventure now on our own little tiny private island. Let's go do it. Better. Who's ready? Super ready. <laughs> I woke up like 10 minutes ago and now we're already in the water and I think it's gonna be a nice little very lucky little octopus out this year. Next time on Expedition Drenched, we sail to Lady Elliot Island, the southernmost coral cay of the Great Barrier Reef. Ordinary marine life, including the endangered loggerhead turtle. And thanks to the University of Sydney, it has been possible to... To what? Because, um, they... No. Um, no. Uh, and... It is just fascinating to be in a pink zone area. Pink diamond. Pink zone, yeah, good. Assess, uh, assist with the research, the scientific research. And I found a gnome. Looking for shadow. <laughs> what are you doing, little gnome? Too much sun. <laughs> on the barbecue, I'm on barbecue duty and we're making veggie tacos. Not like that. We are making some veggie tacos, and just awesome. I do not like mushrooms, but these ones are actually pretty good. Maybe because I made them. <laughs> Chilling. Yeah, because it's very sunny. It's too hot after lunch. I feel like, yeah, having a rest a little bit.